Growing up, heroic religious made me want to be a hero too. My great aunt, Sister Mary Carmel, was a mercy sister at the Martyr, and she modelled faith and compassion for me, as well as ensuring our family went to religious run schools and hospitals. Four different orders taught me, and I was blessed to witness the variety of vocations exercised generously in service of God and his people. In due course, I entered a religious order myself and received my priestly and religious formation from them. Pope Francis, himself a religious, proclaimed 2015 a year of consecrated life for the church, so that we might look at the past of religious life with gratitude, live the present with passion, and embrace the future with hope. As we celebrate the journey of the Christian soul to God on all saints and all souls, we recognise the unique gifts that consecrated persons bring in encouraging all of us to be Christian souls and indeed saints. Fifty years ago, the Second Vatican Council called for the renewal of religious life. At that time, there were 20,000 religious in our country prominent in the life of the church. Today there are fewer than 7,000 and they are not so visible. Sadly, many young people never encounter consecrated persons. Of course, much of the work of consecrated persons is hidden but fruitful. Religious life always ebbs and flows and new movements and forms of consecrated life are emerging even as others pass away. Many religious persevered through the hard times and remained loyal servants of God and his people, often embracing new ministries to the marginalised, even as they handed on their traditional works to faithful lay people to carry forward. But the decline in numbers of religious in our country has not been all for the best. Our church is poorer without their contemplative prayer and active apostolates, their creativity and dynamism, and the example of their sheer devotion to God and his people. Consecrated life, the council taught, is supposed to be a school in loving. But in many ways, modernity has forgotten how to love. We have plenty of the heart-shaped, self-pleasing, Valentine's Day kind of loving. But what we most need right now is cross-shaped, self-giving, Easter Day kind of loving. The commitment and self-sacrifice over the long haul that faithful consecrated people show by example. All Christians are, of course, called to live perfect charity, not merely religious. But consecrated men and women try to do this in a radical way. They publicly profess the three evangelical counsels of poverty, chastity and obedience, imitating Christ, the chaste, poor and obedient one. In a world that says that wealth, sex and power are the ways to happiness, they propose an alternative wisdom. A young religious once told me he wore his habit to be an eschatological sign not just by their dress, but by their vows, lifestyles, their very being, the consecrated show that this world is not all there is. God's way, God's life, God's kingdom is to come. And because the baptised are a royal priesthood and a consecrated nation, you might say that every Christian is a little bit priest and a little bit none. We must all learn from religious how to be signs of Christ and his kingdom come. Consecrated people have been vital in the history of our church in Sydney. Pioneering priests and sisters and brothers brought the faith to Australia and built up much of our spiritual and social heritage. 
we think of those first charity sisters who went to the female factory in Parramatta and established our Catholic hospitals. Or our first bishops who are Benedictine monks. Or Australia's most famous Catholic, St Mary MacKillop, who with her sisters established an extraordinary network of schools all over our city and country. There are so many stories of heroic and hidden religious. Many still live in our diocese and new congregations and movements have come to us from overseas or been started recently. Together they enormously enrich us. They pray for us. Some work in traditional apostolates such as education and nursing, others in parishes, prisons or spiritual direction, campaigning against abuse of creation or the poor, or assisting refugees, the sick and abandoned. To speak of a religious charism is to speak of a grace, joy or love. Our Pope's namesaint, Francis of Assisi, showed how men and women can love creation and all creatures, love humanity and especially the poor, and love the creator of them all. As the Holy Father says, such authentic religious are a wake-up call for our world, radiating the joy of the gospel and following Christ so closely they become magnets to others. As we gratefully acknowledge their contribution, past and present, the Church of Sydney is determined consecrated persons will feature in its future also. Happily, there are young people willing to embrace the life of radical discipleship and find a deep and abiding happiness in doing so. As one said to me, Christ has taken me on an adventure of discovering his deep personal love for me. I ask you all to pray for the renewal of consecrated life in our land, for increase of vocations and for their fruitfulness. Support our religious and join them in prayer, mercy or outreach. Encourage others to consider this noble calling. To our young people, I say, listen to God speaking in your hearts, in word and sacrament, in your families and communities, in the signs of our times and the needs of our world. Visit our vocations website and make a discernment retreat. Be a hero. Join the great adventure of consecrated life. Help fill Sydney with grace, joy and love.